So today we're going to talk about which would win in a race, a 49 Cadillac or a Lotus Esprit Turbo S4S. Let's get started. Wizard, you're full of crap. Yeah, pretty much. No, these vehicles aren't going to race. We will be doing a video on the Lotus here pretty soon. It's in here for some other issues. But it's come to mind, a lot of people have mentioned in the comments, when are you going to stop filming Hoovy's cars? I haven't filmed one of Tyler's cars in over a year. Possibly two years. There just aren't any. I don't film his cars. But today we're going to, just for you guys, we're going to film one of Hoovy's cars. This is his 1949 Cadillac. And although it is so beautiful on the outside, in the interior and under the hood is some massive changes. It's exactly not what you would expect to see on a 49 Cadillac. So let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. So the front is obviously looking like a 49 Cadillac and it doesn't look like anything else. And this is to me the epitome of the pinnacle of automotive design. It is so beautiful. It is just elegant, it's beautiful, and also very massive. We'll go around to the side, you can see that it has the white wall tires. They're in very good shape and it has true wire wheels. Those are not hubcaps. They're the real deal. So it's a very beautiful car and as we get to the back you can see there's one really cool feature here. When you go to put gas in this car it's not where the license plate is, it's not some chrome knob somewhere sticking out in the open. You put gas in the tail light. You say, what? Let me show you. There it is. There's the little fuel cap. You put gas in, and when you're done, all nice and full, you close your tail light back. This is the other end of the Cadillac. These are the years of cars with Cadillacs, that front and rear and sides. It doesn't matter which angle you choose. They are, it's beautiful from every angle. A lot of cars I know have really nice front ends or bad back ends or vice versa, but there's really not a bad angle on this car. Let's go ahead and hop into the interior. You're going to see some huge changes in there from a 49, a true 49. Okay, ladies and gents, are you ready for a little bit of a shock here? There's are some natural elements to this, like the dash up there, nice and steel but as we move around you're going to notice that there's some definite changes this interior is amazing with that wood grain is just beautiful look at that and look at all this uh, i can guarantee that if the wizard was in here he'd be playing the vent cover there it's quite amazing look at those beautiful chrome knobs now as we move back obviously our carpet it's a nice maroon but it is obviously it is been redone and as we look at those door cards uh, some lovely velour on it looking lovely velvet velour well this is definitely not a 1949 uh, interior no no it does appear that a 1980s oldsmobile tornado threw up in here lovely velour seats they're in amazing condition but definitely different than what we were expecting as we look at the center console area Got some power windows, which it probably did not come with originally, I'm guessing, being a 49. Has a lovely kind of gold embellished uh, emblem there on that center part. As we move to the back seat, um, the floor mats that are up here in the front are back here just to keep everything nice and clean. But they're also, I guess, protecting the seat back there because, you know, it is from the 1980s after all. But there's a lot of maroon in here. The back shelf is maroon. The ceiling is maroon. They did a really, really good job in uh, updating this interior. As we land back on the seat, I must say, it does feel a bit like a sofa in here. These are pretty soft, cushy chairs. This wizard would be very happy to be sitting in here. Okay, ladies and gents, I'm having a heck of a time getting far enough back. I'm almost in the back seat trying to get this massive steering wheel in the shot, and I still have, am having trouble getting it all in here. This bad boy is from a 1960s Cadillac. So we have the lovely emblem in the center. This actually this whole entire column came from a 1960s caddy But it's got that very thin rail kind of uh, got a nice ribbing to it as well, but it's very delicate and 
look at how long that column is. It is pretty impressive. And even just sitting here normally, this is how you'd normally sit in the view you'd have going down the road. You literally have to sit up and look down at your gear selector to know where you're at. Luckily, it's an automatic, so it really isn't too big of a deal. But that's a pretty impressive. It's way down there. Also, it looks like we have some a few aftermarket gauges down there. We can see that there is one for fuel. We also have one for water temperature as well to make sure we're not overheating that engine and not running this big pet boy out of gas. So that's what this interior is. Let's check and see what's under the hood. It's as far as it goes. It's like a shark mouth. Yep, so the interior was nothing like a 49 Cadillac except for the dash. And as we get under the hood, we can see that most of the things that would have tied it to 1949 are also gone. So one thing you can see that they didn't have HEI in 1949, so they're definitely not a 40s engine, and that's correct. It is an early 70s Cadillac 500 cubic inch V8. Lots of torque, lots of power. And as Hoovy has mentioned in his videos, it's not lacking for power. When he wants to go, it's got plenty, plenty of torque to pull it along. This is a pretty big engine compared to probably what was a 331 or something that was in here before. The radiator that was for the 331 has been heavily modified. The cooling system's been heavily modified, and we'll see that as we get it up in the air. But just to make enough cooling power for this huge engine, it took some serious doing. These engines easily have 300 horsepower, 500, almost 600 pounds of torque, depending on the year. They are very, very powerful. They can be made to be extremely powerful with an intake and cam and things, but as they are, they are very smooth as well. You can see there's a lot of heater hose things going on over there. We're experimenting with some ideas how to turn off the heater core for him in the summer. There is no provision in the dash for that, so we'll clean that up and make it look a little better. We're just seeing that it works. And you'll understand why we did that here in a minute also when we get it in the air. So right off the bat, we can see that this sway bar was kind of welded together here and kind of made to work for this car. The radiator has been heavily modified and welded and different tanks and things on the top and bottom to make all this work. You can also notice that these components are not from 1949, especially the control arms and the springs. Those are from, Tyler tells me, like a, they believe an 80s truck, that's S10 or something, I'm not sure what it would be, or a, maybe even a full-size truck. It does have disc brakes in the front, which they obviously didn't have in 49. You can see the oil filter, the way that this was modified to fit this engine. It's going to be very difficult to get the oil filter off, but it's not too bad. One of the things it was in here for was the oil pan was leaking oil. We have removed it and put new gaskets on it. You can see where they welded these motor mounts, these little perches actually to bolt the motor mounts to, to make it, this engine fit in here. You can also see right here where they welded and boxed to add this subframe to this car. They did a pretty good job, really. One thing that's really interesting, just like you saw all the hoses we're dealing with up top, is that behind the front right wheel, there's a second auxiliary radiator with its own fan. The heater hoses run to that, and that's additional cooling power to keep this big engine cool. We could not leave that out of the loop with our valves and things we're doing with the heater core. So we're testing and doing some things to figure out what we're going to do with that, but it's very, very strange. One thing that's really cool about these older cars is that the frame is literally like structure that you would see on the Empire State Building. It's so strong. You can see that it has not only a normal frame like a truck, but then it has an X frame that goes even in between the normal frame. Very, very strong. Another leak that this thing had was the governor housing. The gasket right here was just pouring transmission fluid out. You've seen that on Hoovy's video. So we got that replaced and now it is leak free. And how they did the brakes to have power brakes on this thing. They made some linkages and things. You can see them in here, kind of 
using pre-existing parts, kind of mixing them in with modern parts, and I actually have a vacuum booster here. So the brakes would have normally been down here on a 49 Cadillac, but they have changed it to be power brakes using this. And there's our proportioning valve so that we can have disc brakes in the front and drum in the rear. Here's some Flowmaster exhaust. Here's our drive shaft. That looks like a 10 bolt GM rear end. With a bonus uh, mud dauber nest. Yep, with a mud dauber nest. And it has drum brakes in the rear as well. And it does have some air shocks to help level it out so everything sits like it's supposed to. As you can see here, the fuel tank is missing. That's because we have it removed. We're testing to see why his fuel gauge doesn't work. So we're not so much finding things wrong with the car today. We're just showing you how strange and all the alterations and changes that's had to been done to make this thing work. And it actually, like I said, they did a pretty good job. Let's head on over to the fuel tank. So this is a 20 or 25 gallon fuel tank. I'm not even sure that this was the original 49 style. I can see Spectra Premium stamped into the top of the tank, which tells me it's aftermarket. What this tank is supposed to go to, I have no idea. But the fuel sender, you can see that the little ball is full of fuel. I can wiggle it, you can see it. Obviously that's not going to float very well. It barely fits in here. We had trouble getting it out. And I imagine that the trouble they went to try to force this thing to fit in there, they may have ruptured it and punctured the little float. But it doesn't matter anyway because Magic Mike Ohms tested this thing with a voltmeter, a multimeter I should say, and it has glitches all along. It's like damage. Sometimes it'll read a volt, then it'll be half a volt, then it'll be zero. It doesn't make any sense. So this entire unit has failed and we've got one on order. So we had a transmission leak, an oil pan leak. We had this fuel gauge issue here and we're dealing with the heater valves trying to make that work for him. And other than that, that's pretty much all that was wrong. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So I'm not a big fan of people majorly modifying cars like this to the point where it's not even a small percentage of the car that it used to be, but I do applaud the people that did this job. They use mostly General Motors parts, and if this thing's cruising down the road, you see it go by, you have no idea what's under the hood or what's been done. It looks like a 49 Cadillac that's been unmolested, untouched. So they did a very good job as far as that goes. It has upgraded suspension. It has a very powerful engine, a little bit more comfortable and creature comforts and things in the interior. And it also has upgraded power brakes with a brake booster as you saw down below. If you ever find yourself doing a swap like this or big modifications, make sure to keep a list and write down, I got this part from an 85 Monte Carlo. I got this part from a 79 Nova. I got this part. So that way, if you sell the car and someone needs to work on it, they can look at the list and see where all the parts came from. I only work on something like this for Tyler. I wouldn't work on this for someone else because when it comes in, it's literally hours and hours of scratching head going, where did they get this part? How did they do this? How did they do that? And it's hard to bill for that. You know, you say, hey, I spent four hours, $500 just finding the parts. I'm gonna charge you for that. People are like, no, you're not. I'm not paying for that. And then I say, okay, I'm not working on your car. It's, it can be very contentious between a customer and a shop owner on a car like this. But Tyler's very understanding. He's like, whatever, fix my car. I understand, he gets it. So that's kind of why I kind of deal with it. It's not that big of a deal. So for Christmas, I'm hoping to treat myself to a brand new Harley Davidson. They're like 35 grand. So I'm trying to rack up the bill on this thing to get it pretty high as much as I can because you, you know, that's how you do it in a shop, right? This would be 20 bucks. No, line that out, it's gonna be 500 bucks. No, that's not how we do things here in the shop. But I would love to have a brand new Harley, that would be cool. So we've kind of talked about some of the things that are wrong with this, what we're fixing with it. You've seen this probably already in Hoovy's Garage, which just came out recently. And if you don't watch Hoovy's Garage, you really should. It's a really good channel. It's the dumbest automotive YouTube channel in all of YouTube, as he says. And with all the dumb purchases that he makes, I get stuck fixing them. Obviously, I'm not complaining about it. 
Sometimes people say, how long have you known Tyler? A couple years, three or four years? It's like 12 or 15, I don't know. It's been a long, long time since we kind of started together. He had his little dealership. I had my own little mechanic shop that I started and we kind of worked together and we've just been working together ever since. And here we are today. So before this car left the shop, I definitely wanted to do a video to show you guys how much work went into make this more user friendly, more power, and a lot of the modifications that you really can't see just sitting here looking at it until you start looking a little closer. And there's huge modifications to this car, but it was done very well. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on this really nice 49 Cadillac, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many, many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.